Okay. All right, it's 7.02. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. If everyone would please rise and we'll say the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stand for a moment. Yeah, a moment of silence. Uh, tonight, I'd like to remember the families in America that have been impacted by gun violence in our country, and also the 4,700 civilians, including 272 children, who have lost their lives in the Ukraine as a result of the war. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Okay. So uh, this meeting is being recorded live via Zoom and it will be uploaded later to the township's YouTube channel for viewing. Um, under the chairman's report, the board met an executive session prior to tonight's meeting to discuss personnel and legal matters. Community day will take place on June 25th at five o'clock until fireworks uh, at dusk. Uh, that's usually around eight, uh, 8.50, nine o'clock. Rain date is Sunday the 26th. Also under the chair report, we are pleased to announce that Chester County has awarded uh, a grant to East Goshen Township for park Township Park Improvement Project um, in the amount of $60,000 and $60,063. And um, so we're pleased um, to receive that and we are grateful to the county. So thanks to all of them um, for making that happen. Um, yeah, I did the, yeah, thank you. Yep, got that one. There are no public hearings this evening. And we have no pub, we have no emergency services reports. Uh, there is no financial report. <laughs> so we're speeding right along here. And uh, we're down to the approval of minutes and treasurer's report. Um, so if we want to go ahead and take a look at the minutes. Madam Chair, I'd like to make a motion that we approve both the May 3rd minutes as well as the May 24th minutes. Second the motion. Terrific. Did anybody see any uh, corrections? I have one, just a, a spelling correction. Oh. Uh, on the minutes for uh, May 3rd, uh, on page three, line 42, um, the testing is, is actually phylogenetic, which is one word, P-H-Y-L-O, genetic, not phylogenetic. Um, but I wouldn't expect anybody other than a biochemist to understand phylogenetics. So. <laughs> oh, thank you for the correction. Um, I don't know how I missed that. <laughs> I know. Really. Like... Um, with that correction, um, <laughs> does anybody else on the board have any changes or corrections to make? Um, I'll just make a quick note here. Mike Lynch is not able to join us this evening. He's under the weather. So um, it will be... Um, now tossed out to the residents. Does anybody in the room have any questions regarding the minutes or on Zoom? And seeing none, I'm gonna call the question to uh, accept the minutes from May 3rd and May 24th. the 24th. Those Aye. in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. And treasurer's report. Dave? Your microphone is not on. Correct. Sorry. I know I'm tough. Thanks, Madam Chair. Mm -hmm. um, I'll start with, you had a question this afternoon about the different interest rates on yes. the debt servicing. Uh, the 2003 general fund uh, is currently 4.3 over the life of the loan. That oh, okay. matures in 2023. So, I'm sorry, the, the 2003? Four, is general fund debt is, is 4.3 percent thank you that's the highest and that will retire in 2023 right <clears throat> uh the next general fund the 2017 bonds is at 2.7 percent that retires in 2037 thank you 2008 sewer fund mm -hmm. is four percent that retires in 2032 the 2013 sewer fund is 3.1% and that retires 2033. 
And the 2017 sewer fund is part of the general obligation uh, at 2.7 and retires in 2037 as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Dave, you looked into uh, 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 re-upping on these things, right? Yes, I did. The, the sewer funds, um, the, the first, the 2003 general fund, we're so close retiring next year that yeah. it doesn't make yeah. any sense to do. The uh, 2017 bonds, because of the market change from when I proposed it to May, it is basically a break even now. What what is I was going to ask? We were we were at two hundred and thirty five thousand probably to save. What is the going rate? <clears throat> it's exactly where we're at. Where we're at. That's yep. what I thought. Okay. Okay. That's good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for doing that, Dave. Sure. Uh, over the last two weeks, uh, from May 17th to June 2nd, the general fund revenue over this period was driven by earned income, local service tax receipts, uh, the quarterly Verizon franchise fee, rental fees, building and permit, parks and recreation fees. Uh, the expenses for this period included the monthly WeGo contribution, our insurance payments, legal expenses, paving materials, vehicle and equipment parts and maintenance, uh, tree removal, township lighting, and traffic light maintenance new tennis pickleball windscreens that were approved by the board, as well as routine operating expenses. Uh, our capital reserve fund did incur uh, roughly $84,000 in expenses. 58,000 of that was for total site construction at the Hershey's Mill Dam, which if anybody can take a look, it looks pretty good so far. Yes. And we're wrapping it up soon. 26,000 was also for the replacement mower in public works, uh, which was in our approved budget. Um, that is almost a year old from when we ordered it. So we still have another piece coming in the 26,000 and it's gonna end up being about 80,000 total. All right, um, would there be a motion on the table? Madam Chair, I'll move that we graciously accept the receipts and approve the expenditures as presented in the expenditure register and as summarized in the treasurer's report. I'll second the motion. Thank you, John. Uh, thank you, David. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding the expenditures? I was curious, Dave, um, on um, page, page two, um, vendor number 3322. Batch one. Batch one, yeah. And this is a uh, Cohen Law Group. It says legal admin for Comcast in the amount of 26 $140. Yes, that is our second out of three payments uh, to pay Cohen to okay. redo our Comcast. That's that's I, that's what I thought it was. Right. Yeah, I mean, we did okay. get a discounted rate because there's a number, number of, a other lot of municipalities, municipalities yeah. are doing it together. That's right. Okay. All right. And does anybody else have any other questions? I don't. Okay. Are there any questions from anybody here in the audience? Why? Russ, do you have any questions for us? Okay, I, I, no? no? Okay. Um, oh, Brandy White SBCA was a little expensive this month. 1,564, how many sprays was that? I think up? it was 13. Wow. 13? It's unbelievable. It's, it's, it's like time. five cats and one go, it was, Three cats and another one. Some there was a, a dog okay. bit somebody, and okay, all right, pretty expensive. It is expensive. Um, so I'm going to call the question. Those in favor, pay the bills. Aye. Aye. And thank you, everybody. Michelle, we did actually get uh, a couple payments on the return to owners. No, we didn't. Yeah, I think Finally. we collected two. Oh, really? star in your helmet. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> all right. Finally. Moving on, on to old business, discussion of possible noise and nuisance ordinance changes. And I think that um, that's one of the reasons why we have Bill here tonight, if I'm not mistaken. It is, I'll just do a quick introduction, Madam Chair. We had discussed this, well, you have all been discussing it prior to even my tenure here, as far as the noise and nuisance, and a lot of that surrounded the Sunoco discussion over the last few years. Uh, but this year in particular, when the Wellington um, issue came up, we started having that conversation again and it was decided to kind of look at this again and maybe hone in on some more specific uh, things that we could do a little bit 
more quickly because last time you guys were contemplating a lot of different moving parts. So what we had decided or what my understanding was, and, and this is why I'm here tonight to make sure we're all on the same page, is that we were going to look at changing the time frame of when construction is actually allowed. Because one of the things that came up when the Wellington work was that it was allowed it till 10 p.m. Um, on weekdays. And we, are, the board did not feel that that was an appropriate time for residents to have to bear that sort of construction. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was you know, the main crux of it. And then getting the, together with Bill, there's a lot of noise standards in our zoning ordinance, which should not be because we have a standalone noise ordinance. Uh, so we want to, in addition to changing times in the noise ordinance, we wanted to take out noise standards from the zoning ordinance as well um, and just concentrate on that standalone ordinance. And then the third sort of leg of this is creating a new, not a separate nuisance ordinance, but as Bill and I discussed, having a noise slash nuisance ordinance. And then we would present that to you. Um, I mean, we're shooting for the June 21st meeting if we can get draft language together, but those are basically the three, the three things I'd like you all to discuss tonight is, are we on the same page with the time frames or are we on the same page with the time changes? And if so, can we discuss some time frames? I think we brought some up last time, but I'd like to hone in a little bit more on that. And then are we okay with, you know, looking at the other two for draft form? So I would invite the board to uh, a discussion right now. May I say one thing before the board? Oh, sure. Actually, I would invite our solicitor to comment <laughs> first and then the board discussion. I, I apologize. Was, no, 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 no worries. Um, <laughs> That was a great introduction. And I appreciate that, Derek. So as he had mentioned, your, your ordinance is unique in that you have your standalone noise ordinance, but then you also have interwoven throughout various provisions of your zoning ordinance, noise regulations as well. Um, and that makes it a little difficult to change things piecemeal. Uh, and because it's in your zoning ordinance, that implicates a public hearing and yeah. um, advertising, in addition to just amending a standalone ordinance. So Derek and I had talked about, should we propose just making those small simple fixes now with a, a larger scale long-term fix down the road? Uh, but our recommendation I think would be to do this all in one fell swoop instead of doing a piecemeal because of those advertising costs and, and whatnot. Um, so if you want to do, take care of some of the smaller stuff first, we can. Um, but as I said, we would recommend that you do a little bit more of an in-depth dive, which would require a bit more of a discussion tonight on what you're looking for. Um, but that's that's certainly up to you guys. Uh, what are you proposing then? Uh, when you wanna do the whole project, you're saying you will go into the zoning uh, regulation and pull out everything that had to do with noise. Right. Okay. Because right now, I mean, with the standalone ordinance, you have the, the standalone that has criminal penalties associated with it. But then in a zoning ordinance, it has civil penalties and an appeal to a zoning hearing board. So there are two sets of regulations with two parallel paths with, that makes the township have to pick which one they want to go under, which doesn't make much sense. Not to mention that if we want to make any changes, we have to make it in the zoning ordinance and- Exactly. In that's probably, and in, yeah. yeah. So- well, that's, uh, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah. so I, I would recommend we we, Except that that the pulling the uh, noise and nuisance language yeah. out of the zoning ordinance, and 100%. I would be in favor of overhauling the the uh, the what we refer to as the noise ordinance. But I have a couple comments. One, um, uh, one, it refers to vibration as well, and vibration was a big issue during the. Um, horizontal directional drilling of the yes. uh, people had cracks in their foundations yeah. and, and uh, pictures falling off the walls during hammer uh, hammer drilling and so on, um, which became a contentious issue between the homeowners and, and the residents. Um, I only found one township in the entire state that has a vibration ordinance. Uh, and the issue is my second point is measurement. Right. Um, and yeah. uh, and right now with our noise ordinances, in order to enforce that, we've got to come out, put a stationary uh, decibel meter uh, done by an engineer, gets, um, you know, those kinds of things. And so I think uh, any ordinance has to, has to also address um, the measurement, uh, not only the decibel levels or the vibration levels. And one of the issues with vibration is 
how you measure it's a special piece of equipment and has right. to do with bouncing things off of solid walls and right. um, it, it's, it gets really complicated. The one township, by the way, that has a vibration ordinance has it because they have a, a performance stage and sound studio in a residential area and they have uh, uh, oh, hard, yes. heavy <laughs> metal bands <laughs> and it literally vibrates the windows of the houses and is, so on. Is, so. That, is that nasty? David? Uh, I'm not sure. I, I did a research a while ago on that. It might be Ashton, actually. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, the third thing uh, that, that we have to um, look at after we nail down measurements and not only what the measurements are, but how they're done, um, because we do have issues where, you know, someone's having a house party, they've got outside speakers set up, they're playing loud music, and they're having a birthday party. Uh, you know, do you want to really call in Pannoni and set up a, you know, a tripod with the, with measuring equipment? You know, how, how do you address that? The, and that leaves me to the third thing, which is enforcement. I think it, uh, we have to spell out in the ordinance, um, you know, the criteria for enforcement. And then finally, um, the definition of nuisance uh, has all sorts of... That's what I'm waiting yeah, for. Yeah, they all have nuances. Uh, and I, I'm sure there's, a, you know, standards that other townships have used for new, uh, for a nuisance, but other townships um, use the nuisance ordinance in pipeline situations in construction where it was deemed to be, um, you know, affecting the health, safety, and welfare of residents. And mm -hmm. so uh, just special focus on the definition of nuisance in, in that ordinance. Uh, and, and I'm supportive of uh, 10 o'clock is ridiculous. And I don't, even eight o'clock, I mean, some are seven and eight. I mean, I don't think we should allow construction in the township past seven or eight o'clock. So we were, I think when we initially had this conversation, the conversation, and you guys can change this at your whim, but it was seven to seven on weekdays, yes. nine to five on Saturdays and nothing on Sundays. Correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, I think that's fine. Um, so the, uh, So I'm in favor of yanking everything out of the zoning ordinance, having a separate ordinance, mm -hmm. focus on... Uh, what I talked about and uh, and changing the hours, I'm I'm comfortable with that. Those are my comments. So I think David, just to and Bill can jump in as well. But I think some of the things you're talking about from a nuisance perspective, this is why if we bring a draft to you in June 21st, we may not be ready right. for advertisement because I think it's going to take a little bit of massaging, I do too. particularly for the nuisance side of well, things. So. Let me let me ask: Do we have nuisance in now? You you do in your zoning ordinance. You have a provision that says. No land or structure in any zoning district shall be used or occupied in any manner that creates any dangerous, injurious, noxious, or otherwise objectionable condition, fire, explosive, or other hazards, noise or vibration, smoke, dust, odor, or other form of air pollution, heat, electromagnetic, or other radiation, or other condition in such a manner or in such amount as to affect adversely the reasonable use or value of the surrounding area or adjoining premises or be dangerous to public health or safety. And I will preface this whole conversation about nuisance. Don't listen to this. They're notoriously difficult to enforce. <laughs> yeah. uh, what I'm thinking is um, maybe you could pull out the noise or the noise and vibration and leave the rest of that in. Right. Um, in the zoning ordinance? I, no, in I zone, yes, in zoning. Uh, and I'm saying that because uh, that puts it into the zoning commission, and I'd I'd rather uh, be buffered by them. Well, uh, I, noise we can handle as an ordinance, but the other stuff maybe we want to leave it in the zoning. I don't believe it would have anything to do with the ZHB though, because it would still be administratively enforced. It'd be okay. administratively enforced, but then if there was an appeal, it would go to the zoning hearing board, and okay. they're not necessarily they are supposed to interpret a zoning ordinance that relates to uses and area and bulk regulations. They're not necessarily experts in nuisance. I haven't, I have never seen an appeal of a nuisance enforcement go to a zoning hearing board. I, frankly, I've have you seen ever seen nuisance language in a no. zoning ordinance? Uh, well, uh, generically, yes. But if you're going to use it to enforce, you should have a standalone because then it goes to a court. And because, uh, there, there's a, a, a burden, a higher burden. Let me see if this changes your mind. Our zoning hearing board has three permanent attorneys. They're fantastic, let me tell you. One, <laughs> one alternate attorney on it. And um, they handle things pretty well. I'm just they suggesting do. that that's another way to handle it. That's all, something to think about. 
Very good. Okay. Um, does anybody have anything else that they'd like to add? David no, was overall, pretty succinct about. Yeah, uh, overall, David that was touched on it. it. And, yeah. I, and uh, I think it's a good idea. I, I, would, I would just say the draft motion, just again to reiterate, would not give us authorization to go to advertisement for a specific language. It's just allowing us to get started and then bringing language to you to make sure we're kind of barking up the right tree. Do we have to vote on that or is- I would like a draft that, motion so we can get yeah. started because it's going to be solicitor, you know, time. Okay. Madam Chair, well, I'll move to authorize staff and the solicitor to move forward with a draft of the following three ordinance changes. I don't know if your mic is on. Okay. Reminding me, sorry, sorry about that. Sorry. Um, Madam Chair, I'd like to move that we authorize staff and the solicitor to move forward with a draft of the following three ordinance changes. One, chapter 156 noise with changes pertaining to noise levels and specific times of the day uh, and general review of the ordinance language. Second, it would be chapter 240 of the zoning to remove noise standards from, the, from that chapter. And three, uh, a new nuisance ordinance that would regulate disturbances beyond noise i'll second that motion thank you um, is there any further discussion or questions uh, from the board and are there any questions from any of the participating residents here in the room i just have a quick clarification derek i was reading something else when they you listed those times can you send those times to me or? Sure. okay thank you and uh russ do you have any comments or questions regarding this seeing none uh, seeing none, then I'm going to call the question. Those in favor of authorizing staff and solicitor to move forward with draft uh, the following ordinance changes. Aye. 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 Thank you. All righty. And uh, under new business, discussion of the Sustainability Advisory Committee's possible transition to an EAC or an Environmental Advisory Council. Um, so Derek, do you want to give us an idea of? Well, this is just the, and I'll pass it over. I think, Christy, do you want to come up to the podium and, and give some idea of it? And just like to thank Christy for her help on putting this together. She yeah. did a lot of research I know she did. over the last few weeks. So she should be commended for that. And uh, yeah, this is the continued discussion. This is, I think the one solid thing that came out of that ABC discussion as far as where we want to go towards it is uh, possibly moving the SAC to an EAC. And um, Christy could get into some of the background and, and, and reasons why, but um, from here, it's a matter of seeing, you know, what we wanna implement in the EAC ordinance, working with Bill to get that done as well as, as yet another ordinance, sorry, Bill. Um, That's okay, I, lawyers have to eat too, John says. <laughs> <laughs> Right. But I, I will, I, I think the best way to handle this is allow Christy to speak on some of her research over the last few weeks. Well, I wanted to start by first of all, thanking all of you and especially Derek for inviting me to participate in the next stage. And um, after the last meeting, remember uh, Mike said that it would be an either or, and, and we have had assumed that would be the case. I was in touch with the We Conserve PA organization, which is the one authorized by Harrisburg to be in charge of EACs in the state. And um, this is the response, very brief response, when mm -hmm. I said, would it be all right if we include, call ourselves an EAC slash SAC, as long as we fulfill all the requirements and guidelines of an EAC? And this is their response. There's nothing in the law, Act 148 of 1973, that prohibits an EAC from also using the term SAC. You'll just want to be sure in your name usage that no one, council members, other volunteers, local governing board, forgets that you are an EAC, duly created and appointed by the governing board according to the EAC guidelines. So, um, that tells us that it's okay. And what I did, although I'm not quite finished, um, we sent a, a sample recommended ordinance to establish an EAC, but I went back today and looked again at the, the excellent uh, guidelines um, in the original ordinance for the SAC. 
And I have to admit, we have kind of ignored them the last couple of years. We just went on with all of our programs. But when I read them again today, I realized there are several things specifically that David created in that original ordinance that would be excellent to continue to fulfill. So um, Derek, if you can bear with me, I can send you tomorrow. I've incorporated those things into the original. So now it's, if it's all right, I'm calling it an environmental and sustainability advisory council because we have permission and we will use all the guidelines of the EAC. But there are a couple of things that um, in the original SAC ordinance that would be excellent to include. So how about if I just send that to Derek tomorrow and he can forward it to you and, and to Bill, we'll do it all at once and then we don't have to do it in two stages. Perfect. Sure. Is that yeah. all right? That sounds great. Bill, Bill, off the top of your head, are, are you comfortable with what's being discussed as far as the combination? I, I am, yeah, that, that, that's perfectly fine. Um, I haven't seen it done before, but what's, in, what's a name? I can find <laughs> right. it. Uh, right. combined in the yeah. state of Pennsylvania, but then that makes us unique too. So I really so. like the environmental and sustainability advisory committee as opposed to doing the SAC slash EAC. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that's an excellent uh, name actually. So I'd like, to, I'd like to recommend that we incorporate yeah. that uh, if we go forward with forming the EAC. Yeah, and, and there's also nothing in the law, as you said, that, that prohibits an EAC from taking on additional tasks and responsibilities. So as long as we stick with the core EAC responsibilities that are in the law and adopt it the way it's supposed to be adopted, I see no issue. Great. There are so many, um, so many details outlined in the, uh, you know, from the information provided by We Can Serve, and it's all in the recommended ordinance. Yes, it's all in there. <laughs> yep. Christy, thank you so much for all the work you've done on this. Uh, it's. I know it's been really time consuming. I know that you have other responsibilities that you have taken on recently and we really do appreciate it. Well, there's just several things that would very much benefit East Goshen. So I have to say to make sure there are things in here that, it, that on paper sound like they might possibly encroach on some of the current duties of other ABCs. Our committee will not do that at all. We will work supportive, we will be entirely collaborative, but they're in here because that's how EACs are set right. up. So we'll, we'll, we won't- Nothing we won't. says you can't delegate. <laughs> <laughs> but there are some things that nobody is doing that would be great and, and beneficial to- Thank you to very discussion. much. Okay, is that- Oh, to direct the solicitor? Uh, I, I would, I would, yeah, and I didn't put a draft motion on here, but I probably should have because we should basically do what we just did with the other one is, is authorize office, staff and yeah, solicitor, solicitor to, to work on a draft we'll motion. To do that. Yeah. I'd like to make that motion. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what he said. I'd like to second that motion. Oh, there we go. Um, can you come up with the verbiage for that for us? And, uh, and uh, so is there any further discussion here on the board regarding the E-S-A-C? No. <laughs> and is there any other further discussion here in the um, room or Russ, do you have any comments? So seeing none, I'm going to call a question. Those in favor of uh, allowing the solicitor and staff to move forward with creating an ordinance for the ESAC. Uh, aye. 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 Okay. Very good. And uh, next item under new business is consider a request for shoring equipment by Public Works. This is, thank you so much, Christy. Uh, this actually is a safety issue. Um, currently the um, public works department works in the water an awful lot. And uh, this would shore up those walls that are somewhat unstable. Um, this gives them a larger work space. And uh, the 12,665 40 and 40 cent uh, cost has been budgeted for fully. So, Derek, do you have any other? Um... No, that, that pretty much explained everything, Madam Chair. It's, it's just a matter of right now we're using six by six timber, right. um, which can get the job done, but there are just a lot better technologies in order to do trench work. Uh, with aging infrastructure, as I feel like we talk about every single meeting, uh, yeah. the public works crews in the trenches more and more for sewer, stormwater. Right. So this would just give them an extra added layer of security. Okay, is there a motion? 
anyone could. Yeah, Madam Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the uh, purchase of the, what's it called, the wall, or the whaler system, system for uh, trench shoring. I'll just make a comment that you, um, some public works folks have experienced uh, collapses in trenches and you do not want to have one of those with one yeah. of your public works. So this Absolutely. is a huge yeah. uh, uh, safety. And also from an OSHA perspective, this is improved equipment. And, and uh, so I think it's a prudent purchase. Is there a second? Second. Thanks, John. All right. Um, any other questions regarding the Wheeler system from the board or anyone in the room? I would just uh, like to say that the system at $12,000 is probably cheaper than buying lumber today. Uh, that's a <laughs> Unfortunately, that's probably true. <laughs> oh, yeah, please. Yeah. So those in favor of purchasing this equipment for public works, aye. 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 Thank you. Um, under new business, we are to consider appointment of Derek Davis as our zoning officer as we say goodbye to Mark Gordon. Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So as everybody knows, Mark Gordon, um, current zoning officer, director of code enforcement, his last day is this Friday. Uh, we wish him well in his future endeavors. Uh, I am advertising right now uh, on a bunch of different areas for the zoning officer position until that is filled. Um, I had talked about it with Mark and, and other department members in, in the code enforcement and we thought given my background in a previous life, it would be best for me to take over that role temporarily. I have no, I have no intention of staying there past till I need to. Uh, so, so I'm just asking for us, uh, myself to be appointed. I think it's just uh, a motion, right, Bill? There's nothing else special that has to happen, correct? That's can I correct. Modify the, can, can we call it interim zoning officer? Sure, yeah, it's probably a good idea. Okay. Yep. So I'll make the motion, Madam Chair, I move to appoint Derek Davis as to the position of interim zoning officer. Thank you. I'll second that. Thank you. Anybody have an objection or question up here? Or in the room? Or on Zoom? Seeing none, I'm gonna call a question. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, Derek, for stepping up to that. Um, standing issues, we've got the Hershey's Mill Dam Madam project. Madam Chair. Under yes. the chairman's report, did you announce our grant? Or were I did. you going to do that under your business? Did you? She not, yeah, she did. I, I did. fell asleep yeah. somewhere. <laughs> I, I, oh, no, I announced, no, we, we did receive Thank a grant. You. And I'll just reiterate that Chester County Commissioners, um, under the 2022 Preservation Partnership Program, uh, awarded us $60,063 for the Township Park Improvement Project. Um, and so um, we are grateful for that. So I will reiterate Which that once again. Um, I'm not sure what all this is going is to Is that cover. the pickleball deal? Yes. Yes. It's, it's okay, good. Pickleball good. And one yeah, more. that renovation. Okay, perfect. Yep. Okay. But thank you for, yes. So Hershey's oh, Mill, do you want to give us? Oh, I'm sorry. Is that Russ? No. Hello? I see you're good, sir. Oh, uh, yeah, because I can't, I can't get this on, um, uh, the Zoom to work, and uh, I was also can't get it on YouTube, so I just wanted to test it out because I do have a question for the public comment section. Okay. Is that Russ? That's Russ, yeah. Oh, um, all right, okay. Um, Russ, are you okay to wait for a moment? Or is it oh, yeah, yeah, I just want to test it before. I, I've i been trying okay. to test it ever since you start the whole meeting and it can't get through, so I thought I'd test this this way. Okay. Interesting. Sorry about that, and thank you for telling us that. Okay. Um, but we're going to go on to the standing issues and projects. So, Hershey's Mill Dam Project, uh, we have an update. Uh, just the update is that it's progressing. We should be done by the end of the summer. Uh, we are, I think the boardwalk is eminent. So that's the last big piece. Uh, but overall, it's looking pretty good. It's growing. Um, it, it, it looks, I mean, the parking lot's getting there. So yeah. So everything's everything's moving along nicely. We also did uh, receive 250000 in grant money. Yes. That we were expecting. Oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. what, what was the total cost? I'm sorry. About what was the total cost? I think it was just under five million. Okay. So I'll look for it. Okay, okay. but the two hundred fifty thousand isn't like half or anything. <laughs> no. Not even close. Okay. I, I withdraw the question. <laughs> um, and do you have an update on Milltown? Not as far as the permit, which I know we're all kind of waiting for. No. Well, it's, it's still with the APA, right? 
DEP. And I got faked out today because I got an email from Gannett Fleming saying the permit was approved and then it was actually for a Hershey's Mill um, related permit that we were, because we had to do some emergency stuff because of Ida, so we had to redo the permit. So it was for that one. And just so people know, um, you know, we've made efforts through contacting uh, our legislators. Uh, legislatures in Harrisburg to try to move this. It's, there's just no excuse for the DEP to be delaying this permit. It's it's unconscionable, um, and it's, uh, it's so frustrating. I mean, they came in and required us to do this, and then we're trying to get it done, and they're holding up our permit. And it was submitted February 2020. So right before COVID. And it's not like we haven't been following up this whole time. Yeah. No. I have one quick question about that. Did we reach out to Senator Kamita? I can't remember if we asked. I know we did Senator Kane and Representative. We did Diane. not. Just Kane and Kamita. But we Kamita actually. Not our, but she our will current. be come January. Yeah, but she's not our current. We're supposed to go to Kane with those issues. Well, yes, and we we have done that. Yeah, we have. It wouldn't hurt to talk to Carolyn, would it? If she sits yeah. on the environmental. Board, then let's then somebody's got to contact her. Yeah, I mean, we <laughs> no comment. So, uh, yeah, she does sit on the environment. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, I will if you want me to, I'll reach out to Carolyn. That'd be great. I'll do that tomorrow. That'd be terrific. So, the Hershey's Thanks, Mill Dam, uh, the total estimate is 1.765 million. Uh, we have spent one point roughly two, and we still have another uh, let's see the grants total of 630,000 in grants so take 250 out of that so we still I was going to say Dave when you said 5 million I was like that doesn't I was sound I had the Hershey right. mill, or the mill town in my in my okay. head yeah okay. good all okay. right good thank you Dave yep. and um, does anybody have anything under any other matter anybody in the audience anything under Okay, um, we're to the public comment period. Um, are there any public comments here in the room? Uh, Russ, do you, you said you had a, a comment that you wanted to make. We, you're, you're muted now, hold on. Uh, hold on, he was unmuted. He has to unmute, oh no. There we go, wait, wait, is he there? I don't know what's going on with it. All right, so. Hold on, I, I, oh, there we go. Russ, can you hear? Yes, I am. Sorry about that. Uh, oh, um, okay. Just a couple of things I'd like to follow up with you guys is that, did you take off the um, live meetings off of YouTube? The li live meetings are not on YouTube anymore. We upload them afterwards. Okay, so not, not on there, okay. Um, also, um, the East Ocean website, you know, the dashboard that shows the calendar of events, uh, there's nothing that you can click on there to open up the any agendas for any of the uh, upcoming meetings. I know you have to go to the individual ones, which is what I had to do. But uh, oh, so you're saying to... you're saying an agenda link to the from the calendar? Yeah. Yeah. I have we ever done that, Russ? I, I'm I'm asking. Yeah, I used, to it, I used to do it all the time. Um, okay. It might have been something we dropped when Susan left, so I can I'll bring that up and uh, we'll get that taken care of. I appreciate the information. Okay. Then my last thing is um, on the May third meeting, board of supervisors meeting. I asked if I could see um, or hear uh, what the total cost to date was on the Paoli, Paoli Trail. And Dave has that information. Yes, I do. You missed it at the last meeting, but I'll redo it for you, Russ. Uh, you wanted to know how much we've spent to date. I'd like to know what we have spent to date, and also what what are any items that are open that is, that we're still going to have to spend on. Okay, so what we've spent to date, total dollars is four million five million four hundred eighty two thousand five hundred ninety three dollars, okay. and just over three million of that was grant money. So right. out of pocket for the township is. Two million four hundred ten thousand eight hundred forty-four dollars. That's as of uh, the most most recent. Do you so as, as of today, then, right? Uh, yeah, as of today. How much over budget is that, Dave? Uh, well, approximately was it forty or fifty grand? Well, the total. Uh, let's see. I'd have to take out because they budgeted the whole thing in total. 
And I gotta take out the piece. Hang on, Russ. Um, yeah, Davis yeah. Just some math. Yeah, it looks like about two million over the original budget. Two million over the original budget. Yeah. Total. That's what I kind of thought. And and the numbers you gave to me and the, with what little there is left to do, it does not include these feeder trails at all, right? That's correct. It does not include the oh. feeder trails. They were never so, in the budget. They were never budgeted right. before. So if that's never in the budget, are we misleading the futures committee by letting them think that that's going to happen? Uh, no, we, we told them that they have to understand that it's not currently budgeted for. And in that survey, they were supposed to make it clear that it was something still not budgeted for. And they were just trying to gauge an interest or not from the public. So that's, that's why they asked those questions. But they understand perfectly clearly that it's not, none of the stuff that they put in that survey has been budgeted for, none of the amenities or anything. Okay. Well, so it looks and like. You, we'd have to take right. out se segments A and B that was budgeted together since we haven't done B. Um, right. We're really only about 500,000 off of budget, original budget. Right. But that doesn't take into account the segment A that was done. I don't have a direct comparison from segment A standalone. Right. Or, or, or any of the future uh, alternative routes. You don't have any uh, estimations? Uh, uh, no, we numbers. have estimates. We have estimates on those. They range from right. 4.3 to 2.2 million at the lowest. So it would be fair to, for me to think that those uh, alternate routes are going to be considered over budgeted items? Mm. Well, if it, you earlier said, you said we're over budget by $2 million. So if we go to these alternate routes, whichever one we decide to do, is that going to be adding to the the two million that we're over budgeted on? It's yes. kind of a slippery slope. The so currently, if you take out segments A and B, we're about five hundred thousand dollars over budget. And okay. if you look at the total, we would be about if we take the most expensive alternate route, we would end up yeah. being about two million dollars over budget. Okay. Okay. So, okay. So all right. Cheapest route we would be about on budget. The cheapest route would put us on budget. Close. The cheapest route no, would put us on no budget. Feeder, no, feeder, right, no feeder yeah. trails. I right, right. Feeder, feeder trails were always something that was intended to be done later on. Right. Uh, so uh, the, the original budget, we, we can meet the original budget if we use the least expensive route. Is that what you're saying? Our, our, it, it would be close, yeah. I know, I know you're going to be specific with me, and I'm being general. Um, we'll be close to the original okay. budget yes. okay that's that's information okay. for me too russ that's what good. do you think I, I think it's a lot i think it's not it's a lot better than what i thought i just okay. came out of the i did go to the futures committee meeting um last let's see when that was when that topic was up back in march and i came out of that meeting that um that was going to be costing that wasn't that was part of the budget then I asked specifically of Tom, is this, because he said they're going to do uh, hard paving on the feeder trails. And I said, was well, it in the budget? And then he, did, then he came back and said, no, it's not in the original budget. That's why I keep asking these questions. Right. And Russ, to be clear, it's not determined if any of the feeder trails will actually be paved. Um, it's going to depend on the board at the time um, right. when feeder trails proposed. Some of right. the feed trails might be wood chips. Um, some of them could be asphalt. Some of them could just um, be existing um, macadam. So it's just going to depend on the trail and it's going to depend on the board at the time. Right. Okay. And so. when, how, how much further, how much longer are we going to be just talking about this before we make a decision? 
mean, it's, it's very conceptual right now, Russ. So right. what I would say is that it needs a lot more fine tuning than, than what we have now. Plus so, we don't have $2 million right now. Yeah. So the board, I mean, the board put it out to all the ABC. So I'll be getting input from them over okay. the summer. And I, I already started that at the planning commission last week. Um, but I, I mean, if you look at the original plan and how long that was talked about before there was a shovel in the ground, and then you're right. talking about changing the route, you know, it's, it's not something that could be done overnight. So you know, yep. it's going to be quite a while. I can't pinpoint exactly. I'm yeah. Like, if we wanted to go up for grant money for those alternate routes as well, right. that yeah. takes right. a little doing. Yep. Well, to, we don't, we're not even there. You have to understand that, you know, the Chester Valley trail, for example, which is a, you know about 15 miles. Um, they started thinking about that 20 years ago. I didn't think it was ever going to be built in my lifetime. I mean, because of the, all the permitting and getting easements, all the engineering, moving utilities, repairing culverts, um, uh, you know, uh, the permit process from the state. Uh, it takes a long time. So, um, right. you know, the, the Paley Pike Trail may not be finished in my lifetime. <laughs> okay. So, so the best thing for me to do is to keep reading the agendas. Well, what did you say, Russ? I'm sorry. The, the, the best way for me to keep up to date with this is to keep reading the agendas on future meetings. This is what I'm trying to do. Right. Good. Good. Thank you, Russ. Yeah, I mean, that, to answer your question, yeah, Russ, that would be the best way. Okay. All right. Well, and thanks you, again, everybody. You can always reach out to, to us by email and. Yeah, yeah you know that you can always, always do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Russ. Bye now. Um, see you later. Um, does anybody have any other comments? <laughs> there are no liaison reports. There are no correspondence to report. Um, I think we've come up to item 16. Great. Madam Chair, I'd love to make the motion to adjourn, please. Second. <laughs> Those in favor. Aye. Aye. Thank you, everybody.